a little bit more detail on the reflecting telescope. We're going to look at the advantages of reflecting telescopes and how to draw the what's called the Cassegrain arrangement. This is a standard diagram that you need to be able to draw for the exam from scratch. Okay, so first thing we need to do is just remind ourselves about diagrams with mirrors. So here's the ray of light coming towards a mirror from an object, a concave mirror. Okay, it's got a focal point here. Where's the image formed? We need another beam. Well, one way we can draw the beam is to the center. This thinks it's hitting a flat mirror here. This is like a plane mirror because it's normal is along the axis. So that goes. You can also draw a beam through the focal point of the mirror. That will come back parallel to the axis. So don't need three lines, but just so we can see them, all three meet at this point. Okay. So if you put your head there, you'd see an image. Of course, one of the problems with this is that your head is then in the way of all the light. So actually getting the light out away from the mirror so you can see it and have your a place to put your head is one of the problems that's been put in the way of astronomers for many years. One solution to that is called the Cassegrain arrangement. Okay, you need to be able to draw this diagram. I've got a very simple way of showing you how to draw it. So we start off with our uh, primary mirror. This is a concave mirror. The light comes from an object. We draw it in a slightly different way because we just draw the light coming in parallel from the object. Okay, but the light hits a convex secondary mirror here. You could use a plane mirror, but if you used a plane mirror, this would be symmetrical. If you look at this diagram, the mirror would have to be about twice the size in order to still send the light down through this hole in the primary mirror. Okay, that's not the greatest diagram ever drawn. I've got a slightly better one to replace it in a minute. Um, we then put the light through a lens to focus onto a detector, which might be your eye, or more likely some of, one of the other kind of uh, detecting mechanisms that we'll look at in a later lesson. Okay, so here's a better diagram, but basically the same. Primary mirror, secondary mirror, which is drawn probably a bit bigger than it needs to be in here, just so, to make it clearer sending the light back down through this hole in the primary mirror. Okay, there are other arrangements for reflecting telescopes. Okay, the original reflecting telescope was a Newtonian reflector. It had a mirror up here which sent the light out sideways. But then you've got to put your eye up at the top of the mirror to see it. And if you're going to put any kind of um, instrument on there, it's going to unbalance the telescope. So these days they like to have everything along the axis of the telescope and put the detector on that axis down the center of the telescope. So just to check you've got the ideas here, what problems will affect refracting telescopes but not reflecting telescopes? That one is chromatic aberration, because we're not bending the light here, all the different colors of light will reflect at the same angle. Okay, the problem that will reflect both refracting and reflecting telescopes, but is easier to avoid in reflectors, okay, well, this is spherical aberration because the lens will bend under its own weight. The mirror will also bend under its own weight, and you've got to keep it the right um, shape. But, of course, with a mirror, you can put as much support as you like underneath the mirror and that to stop it bending, whereas with a lens, the light has to go through the lens, so you can only really support it around the edge. So as it gets heavier and heavier, it's harder to keep it in shape. Okay, the problem that affects both refracting telescopes and reflecting telescopes and can't um, be avoided by either is resolution. Okay, so in resolution we've got this airy disk, we've still got this limiting factor of theta approximately lambda over b. Okay, but the thing is, as I've said before, you can make reflecting telescopes much, much bigger. So the bigger the aperture, the better the resolution. So this is why most uh, optical telescopes in the world these days are reflecting telescopes.